Evening folks, as promised, we're going to start a series of videos. Now what we got here is two different tomahawks I've made. And there's your classic style. And here's a style that kind of a post-apocalyptic grunge look. Call it a zombie killing axe. That's the kind we're going to be making. So we're just going to go step by step. Now we've got my forge here. That way I like to light it, because I don't like getting burned. And I got me one of these lighters here at the dollar store. It don't always like me. Let's get that lit. We'll step over here. There we go. Forge is on. Let that burn out. Now I got all my stuff here I'm gonna need. I'm waiting on my cameraman to get out here. We're gonna let that forge get up the temperature and we'll walk over here to our pile. I find us a nice little old spike. Now, what I look for when I'm doing a spike like this, so this is a newer one. It's high carbon steel, nice straight, uniform, no bends, the end ain't chipped up, head's in good shape. Now this end down through here is gonna be our spike and the head that's gonna be our blade. We're just gonna pitch him up on, a, on up in there. Walk over and get my tongs. Yeah, it's a mess, but it's my mess. Go ahead. Get him up in there a little better. Now, this forge I got right now, it's on one burner. That switches it to two, you can hear the difference but it's got a flame in the back now. I'm gonna go ahead and get my gloves on. I had to do this with my phone, so this we broke up into several videos. Now I've seen people that'll take a punch like this and they'll mark the spot on the spike where they want their, uh, they want to start cutting their hole at. So, fire bricks. I call it the ghetto forge because, well, I'm poor. <laughs> I can't afford things. Take that couple of minutes to come up to temp. This is a Another type of the knife we make here, these railroad knives, they're real popular. I'll do a series on making them one night. Well, as you can hear it pulling there, may need to adjust our oxygen intake. And how we do that is these right here. So, I'm gonna switch that over to one burner. Now when these come from the factory, they're always ran all the way down. Turn it on, you're just gonna have a yellow flame. You open it, and that's how we get our blue flame that's what we're looking for. Let's see if we can see it on the video here. Yeah, it's picking up real nice. That blue flame, that's our hot. That's what you want. You want that coming out of there? Get this up the cool that had burn it. It's hot. Yeah. Gloves. They're cheap from Harbor Freight. Only problem with these is right there. Had that issue. But ain't no big deal. I make do. It's taking a little longer than normal tonight to reach temperature. Now this type of forge here came with a little regulator. And it's got that decreases the amount of propane you got coming out. You turn it that way, turn it this way, we increase it. Now what I do is I open mine all the way up and I increase it till it reaches temperature. I don't want it too high. But once it reaches temperature and stays there, I'll decrease the flow of propane to conserve gas. Now as you can see, this spike's taking a little bit longer than the others to reach temp 
So what I'll do is he'll have to be in there a few more minutes. But in the meantime, I can at least set my holes. All right, let me take over this camera. Now he's still too cold to start forging. But what I can do is I can take my soapstone and I'll measure me out a gap of about what I want my hole width to be. Take my little four pound hammer and I line it up right there. Set a divot and then Now there's two little dots on there. Now in between them dots is where I'll take my chisel and start working that hole out at. Pull him back to the fire. So that, all right, I got a question. So that right there, uh, that is a soap pen thingy? Soapstone. It, it's soapstone, it's what they use in welding and stuff. I use it for marking the metal. No, that. It works out real well for this. That works. Commentation in the background, that's my son RJ. He's helping me out tonight because I needed a camera man. Hello. And trying to do all this by myself is, well. It's impossible. Exactly. That's dangerous. Yeah, and, and I what don't. What I do is I always keep the back end of my forge locked up. Keeps a little bit of extra heat in there. Helps the forge heat up a little faster. Once again, it's be better with fire bricks, but I had other expenses. <laughs> That's life. Alrighty. Now he looks like he's almost. Yeah, we can go ahead and start with the chisel now. So I uh, point it over there. There's my my divots. And you want to try to keep your chisel straight. You want to use short, powerful blows. Now. See, it's already cooling down, so he's not quite at temp, but I've at least got it marked now. Take the tongs, put him back in. Lock him up. Push it back in there somewhere. You want it up in the middle of your fork where it's got the maximum amount of heat. Let it bake. Just like Some a pan of don't do that, but that's what I do. I keep it burning like that. I, I block up there, maximize <coughs> heat, minimize loss. Of uh, my gas, propane's expensive. I've not made a money, so. Now I got who is. But that kind of setup I got, you see right in there, it's burning pretty hot. Over on this end, I got it blocked up. Not really the best job, but it works. Now he's starting to get that nice orange color. Alright. <laughs> I'll take a couple steps back so I don't get hurt. see it's starting to cut into him he's swelling out to one side what I'll do is when I get him worked out I'll even that up and a nice even split. most smiths use what's called a drift or an anvil punch but those are about 80 bucks a piece and I don't have those and I don't have money to spare so what I use a big old steel chisel I open it up with, and then the rest of it. It's got a railroad spike. <laughs> Big metal spike off of something. It don't make the best holes in the world, but it'll work in a pinch. Once you get this to temperature, 
it'll start moving a lot faster and it's easier to get it again. I've got him attempt now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my fast but it'll still stay hot enough for me to forge with. Now in a later video when I get a few things I am going to attempt Damascus but that's going to be for a little while. <coughs> All right. You want to move your chisel up and down where you're smack when you're trying to draw your hole out. Do a few hits in one spot, move it back, do a few in another spot. You don't want to get too much in one one spot because it really mess you up. Alright. Be ready to go back to fire. This part here takes about 10 or 15 minutes. For us to get the hole done, punch through him and all. But like I said, since I'm doing this on cell phone, I can't exactly speed it up. That is on the list of things I eventually do. Get some good software on my computer where I can do videos properly. The way I'm doing that hole, it should turn out about like that one did. But that took a little bit of work. It's gonna be hot. I'm just working this one side for right now <coughs> until I can start seeing it to the other side so I get an even cut. I don't want my cut uneven on this. starting to move it. Well, you can see it's got a nice dark spot there. We're about halfway through him now. So, save y'all some time. We'll come back and start the next video. Whenever I started cutting in on the other side. And we'll move on to how I shape the hole and all. But I always do the hole first before I start drawing out my blade and my spike. That way that's done, and it gives me a little bit more room to work with. Alright, see y'all next video.